Hello, welcome to this Portico Library event, which is part of the 2021 celebration of the Portico Sadie Massey Awards, which, as you know, focuses on the writing of young people, either their creative writing or their writing of short stories. My name is Anna Mannering and I've written two novels for teenagers called Rebel with a Cupcake and Tulip Taylor. And today I'm very happy to say I'm um, accompanied by two other writers who are connected with the Portico Library. So first of all, we have Hallie Fletcher, who is a poet um, and author of Love, Sex and Death and Moth. And Lucinda Nettleton, who is a creative writing tutor um, and author of Eastern Roots and Western Branches and a contributor to the anthology Timelines. So why are these two people here? Well, Hallie um, entered into and won an award for the Portico Young Writers Award, which has now been replaced by the Portico Sadie Massey Award. And as part of that um, win, uh, she won mentoring with Lucy. Um, uh, so this year, the Key Stage 4 winners are going to get mentoring with um, Manchester's Writing Squad, writers and last year the winners received mentoring from the Portico Sadie Massey Awards workshop leaders. So mentoring is a very important part of the Portico support for young writers and so, de so today we're going to talk about what it means to be a mentor um, and how it's helped both of our writers on their writing journey. So, Hallie, if we can go to you first, yeah. um, before you entered um, into the award as a young person, um, what did writing mean to you? Everything, literally everything. Writing was like my therapy. Um, when I was younger and I was going through some difficult times, writing was literally my life. It still is. Um, yeah, my poetry. It was a way of expressing myself and getting my feelings out there um yeah so writing Everything. was really very important to you was it a I career thought. choice that you thought that was yes. open to you right so you knew yeah. right from the start you wanted yeah. to know it I think I did my first book um like literally made a book when I was about six so my mum's still got it somewhere she's kept it so it's been there since I was younger um I've always wanted to follow that career path mm-hmm and do you have any sense of where that desire came from? I don't know, you know, I just, I, from when I was younger, I started writing short stories um, and I fell in love with it. And then my teacher, Mr. Green in high school, he said, you've got a real talent. And he was the first person to recognise that other than my parents. Um, and that that was what made me realise, oh, oh, he actually believes in there, like he believes in my writing. So oh. I can actually do this and get somewhere with it so that's brilliant so your supportive parents and a supportive teacher were yeah. really vital encouraging you yeah, massively. okay Lucy so what about you did you want to be a writer from a young age when you were a young person um what did you think a writer was what did writing mean to you I think I always wanted to be a writer but it felt completely out of reach so completely different to what Ali thought Um, I have two very distinct memories I used to go to the library every single week with my mum um, and she was very dedicated she'd help me carry my little stack of books that would be covering my face otherwise um, and I was always very interested in looking at the stories or the facts, whatever book I'd pick that week, um, as I was looking at the author bio at the back and I'd read where they were from, what they looked like, um, what else they'd written. And I was always very interested in that, but it felt like they were in a different world, like something from a, a fantasy realm. Mm -hmm. um, I remember an author coming to primary school and us sat waiting for him to swoop in and we're all sat with a little cross leg on the wooden floor um eager to see what he was going to say and I just presumed he'd rolled out of a limousine and he was signing autographs on the way in um and I just yeah it felt completely unachievable but I was starstruck um and then when I I've never left English so as I've encouraged and gone through my GCSEs and different things I've met more and more authors and then I made friends with authors and then I became an author and I, I think that being a writer is something that you're always very most most writers are always very interested in it from a young age mm. um and it just kind of finds them I think if you're on that path it finds it finds you no matter what and for me definitely young age I'm still as starstruck as I am today 
find meeting writers and then you can make a career out of it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really interesting. And it's an important point to make that if you want to write, it's so good to meet other people who are interested in writing as well. Because like yourself, I loved writing as a young person, loved going to the library, but I always felt it was something for other people and not for me. So it was, it's taken me a long time to kind of meet other writers and go, oh, you want to write too? Okay, that's <laughs> cool. And it's really lovely when you kind of get that sense of connection, really. Right, so let's focus on the matter in hand, which is um, the, the Portico and its awards. So Hallie, you mentioned your teacher before, but what led you to applying to the Portico Young Writers Award? It was actually my school um, that did it all for me. Right. Um, I remember Mr Green pulling me to one side and said, we've entered you into a young person's competition for the Portico Library. So I was like, oh, I was like, wow, because he'd read a short story of mine um, and that it was that that made him want, want to do it. And to me, and he entered another girl. And yeah, I met Lucy and it just worked out really well. So you didn't even actively do it. It was just that your school and your teachers yeah. recognised your talent and then put you yeah. forward. And how did I you was feel really when you found, found out that they'd done that? Very, very shocked because, like I said before, I was going through a very difficult time. Um, my confidence was very, very low. Self-esteem was very low. Um, so when he said that, I couldn't believe it. Mm. Could not believe it. So that felt like validation that somebody else other yeah. than yourself valued yeah. your writing and thought your yeah. writing was worthy of sharing with a wider audience. Yeah. And how old were you when, when you did that or when that 15. happened? Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a really important event. Um, so, um, Lucy, why, why did you apply to be um, a mentor? I was encouraged to um, apply to be a mentor. Um, I think she's still a friend of the Portico Library to this day. Um, so Sherry Ashworth, brilliant author and lecturer. And at this point during my degree, because it was part of my um, degree that I went into the Portico, um, mm. we was doing language modules, literature modules, and more and more creative writing if you wanted to take it. Um, and I was getting a lot of encouragement from the creative writing aspect and writing my own work, but also how I would support other people in a critiquing capacity um, and encouraging them. I would say I'm a cheerleader for everyone. And I think that's that's true and that's never left me. Um, so I was really encouraged to take part. I went forward, put my name forward and was selected um, to be a mentor for the mm -hmm. Portico Library. And it's never left me since, like mentoring, it has been a big part of my life from that moment going forward. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because I don't know about you, but when when I thought about being a writer as a, a as a younger person, um, I kind of thought writing was just sitting on your own in a study and just sort of not interacting with other people. But from what you both said, having other people encourage you and support you and bring you on has has been a really important part of the process. So is that something that you think is true? Yeah, definitely. I think that having like minded people to talk to um, mm -hmm. and people that understand like which direction you're going in with your creative writing if they can help you with your content brilliant if they can help you with your confidence even better um mm -hmm. but actually just putting pen to paper and not letting your ego or your brain whatever's in the way of stopping you from communicating that down in the first place um is really important and I think those are the baby steps that make all the difference Okay, right. So Hallie, let's talk about the actual mentoring experience. Yeah. So do you want to talk through how the mentoring experience worked for you? Um, you know, how did you and Lucy interact and, and what did you get from the mentoring experience? Yeah, um, I remember the first day um, they was giving out the mentors and they said, you'll be with Lucy. And I was like, oh, and my friend was like, oh, can we swap? I was like, no, <laughs> no so it is what it is. Um, and then Lisa came over and she was just so passionate and polite and happy and cheerful. And she really like pushed me because I was, I was struggling. I was struggling. I felt like I didn't fit in much. And Lucy was like, you can do this. And she always said, reach for the stars. And that stuck with me. It makes me emotional. Um, it <laughs> stuck with me massively. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, it went really well. We just mm -hmm. clicked. So what were you working on at the time? Um, Apple of my life. So um, my poem on Alan Turing. Oh, and right. I 
a journalistic piece, um, which was on stereotypes. And then I also entered the short story one as well. So I decided to go for all three. Um, Lucy was really supportive as well of me doing so. Uh So when you say you didn't fit in, where, where did you feel that you didn't fit in? In the world of the portico and the world of writers or the world of school? Do you mind me asking you, you know, where you felt that you didn't fit in? Um, I just felt like, I don't know, because of my self-esteem and stuff and my, my confidence at the time, um, my low confidence, I felt like I didn't fit in with all the other writers there. Mm. Like, I just, I felt a bit low, but Lucy made sure that I felt like I was I was ready for it. And obviously it happened. So, yeah. That she yeah. was a winner, which she was. Yeah. <laughs> not not to spoil um, the story, but she won. <laughs> But no, I just think that's such an important message to get out because I think, you know, I felt as a young person, it wasn't for me. Lucy, you said you felt that authors kind of were people who turned up in limousines and were other to you. And Hallie, you said, you know, you initially didn't feel that you fitted in with the idea of what a writer is. But I think it's really important to get across the message that anyone can be a writer, is a writer, if they choose to be, if that's their passion if that's what they want to do, you know, there's a stereotype of what a writer looks like or the background a writer might come from, but every single one of us who wishes to write can, can, can be so. So yeah. do you feel, do you feel like you are a writer, Hallie? I mean, you clearly are, but do you feel more confident in saying? Well, I no, I do. Like, and now I do. Um, but I put that down to Lisa. Right. I've honestly, like, without a mentor in there, I wouldn't, have grown into the person I am today I feel like Portico would have been a complete different experience if I didn't have a mentor Mm -hmm. um because I probably I probably would have quit Mm. because I was quite low and and I probably wouldn't have have entered all of them and Mm. everything would have been completely different so having a mentor and having Lucy it made the world of difference like it made it, it made it the experience it is was that's absolutely fabulous. So Lucy, you clearly contributed a lot to, to Hallie and her writing, but did you feel you gained anything from being a mentor? Completely. And and me and Hallie not so long ago wrote a blog for Portico Library because mm-hmm. Hallie said that it changed her life and she wrote a blog about how it changed her life being a part of the prize. Um, and I wrote one back in reply to her and, and basically said it changed my life too because at that point I was applying for a PGCE um, and would probably have gone into mainstream teaching um, and at that point during the, the portico and my degree everyone was encouraging me to take a master's in creative writing um, and it was working with Hallie and how good Hallie did um, and inc- finding that there was a career that you could combine writing which I love doing myself and helping other people to write um, but also, you know, having that very human element of chatting and talking to people and encouraging them. And um, I did my master's and I've never looked back and that was life changing for me. So I wasn't a part of the prize in that I didn't, you know, mm. actually enter the competition. I was just the mentor. But at the same time, that completely changed my life as somebody that was part way through their undergraduate degree at a fork in the roads of a PGC or a master's and mm-hmm. took the leap, never looked back. And I think, again, that's such an important message that in the mentor-mentee relationship, as a mentor, you can learn so much from your mentee. It's not a one-way process. It, yeah. It's very much um, uh, a two-way process where you give and receive and, and you, you learn from each other. So uh, do you feel that you've learned things from Hallie? 100%. So me and Hallie have actually stayed in contact since the portico. Uh, we've never lost contact. So I've seen Hallie go from her... GCSEs um, Mm -hmm. during the portico Mm -hmm. and her going to college and going to university and doing her own masters and there's probably not a day where or at least a week where we don't contact in some way Um, and it's just been life-changing to create that career and self-belief in somebody else and also in myself um, and also to have made a friendship that's so long-lasting as well. and yeah, I feel like everybody mentoring at any age and stage is so important and, you know, getting involved in opportunities like the Sadie Massey Awards, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're there, these opportunities are there, so get involved. 
Yeah, so that's a really, really um, good thing to dwell on for a moment, isn't it? Is that there are some opportunities out there, maybe not as many as we'd hope, but if you're a young person and you see an opportunity for something and you might think, oh, it's not for me or I'm a bit nervous about it, it's really important to grab those opportunities, yeah. put yourself forward, even if you don't really feel like it, because then it can lead on to something that, that can help you in your writing. Um, yeah, okay, so Hallie... Um, you entered the Sadie Massey Award, you won. So which piece did you win for? It was a journalistic piece on my stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I took photographs of people wearing black t-shirts and wrote an article on it and basically said, can you tell what this person would do? What's the career? Um, what, what kind of sports they do? And the whole point was you can't, mm. you can't judge a book by its cover. So it, yeah, that, that one, and then my poem was commended. Brilliant, yes, because uh, yes, okay. So do you want to talk through how your writing career progressed then? So that was obviously an important early yeah. stage, and then you've gone on to be published. So could you just talk a little bit about um, where you went from the the Sadie Massey Award, and then what your path has been since then? Yeah, um, so I got a job afterwards um but my heart was more into writing still so I decided to go to college and do a access course mm -hmm. access to higher education and it was so hard it was a shock it was a big shock um because I didn't do my A-levels I just jumped straight into it mm -hmm. um and I worked and I worked to get into the University of Manchester um and I just kept trying and trying and I did I don't know how, I, I just, I, it was it was very hard, mm. but I got there. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a bit about your two poetry collections? Yes, I did them when I was doing my undergrad. Um, my first one, Love, Sex and Death, and then Moth. Um, yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about what were uh, what went behind writing poetry? Because you've talked about writing your journalistic piece before. Yeah. Um, and then you obviously were writing poetry at the same time. Um, so could you just talk for a, a little bit about um, how how it felt to have two um, anthologies published? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, it was more for... People, right, so when, when I was on social media, I said to a lot of people, like, I'm thinking of writing a book. And a lot of people said, I don't I don't usually read, but I'd love to read your collection. Mm -hmm. So I was like, right, that's a really good idea. People that don't read, get them to read and, and, and get them to enjoy the beauty of literature. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to do my first collection um, and it did really well. And a lot of people was reading it that said they wouldn't usually pick up a book and that they really enjoyed it. So yeah, it, it, I was really proud of myself, honestly. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so let's think about um, young people who might be watching this um, and what advice we might give to them. Um, so if I can come to you, Lucy, first. So what, um, what, would, what advice would you give to be a young person who wants to write, has got this passion to write, but isn't quite sure how to follow that path? I think, what I say to everybody is you do only get one life. I know it's so stereotyped and cliche, but you do only get one life. So if you have any inkling that you want to do something, whatever it is, whether it's writing or riding a dirt bike or, you know, mountain climbing, whatever it is, go and do it. Um, actually ways into it, I'd say to them to support and access the local libraries. Um, you know, we like I say, Sadie Massey runs every year and it's a fantastic opportunity um I would tell them to scribble in their in their own privacy scribble everything down and that confidence builds and the more they do it and the more they share um the work and if they're not just reading it to your grandma for the first time or with not an audience and then maybe you might do something for school um just to not give up on it and to keep everything that you write it's really important to keep it there and then maybe return to it and redraft or just keep it in its beauty of its first raw form um, and get it out there and, and take part and seek out these opportunities um, because that's what Hallie did. 
that's what I've done and I imagine you as well and there has there's been competitions and different things that you've take, taken part in and I think it's really important to just put yourself out there and um, no matter what you want to do it so do it anyway and the, the world will see you and your writing and that that in itself is such an achievement who whatever you put out there um as long as it's something that you want to do do it okay and Hallie if I can come to you so what advice again would you give to any young person who wants to be a writer but doesn't necessarily feel that that's a path that's easy for them um you can do it you have the strength to do it if you if you love and you enjoy writing or anything in that matter um go for it don't let your your low self-esteem if you have low self-esteem get in the way because there is support out there and and there is other writers and obviously mentors that will help you see your true potential yeah I think that's important that yeah sometimes you need to trust other people's view of you yeah. you know you had teachers who supported you and said that yeah. you could write and that really helped you on so yeah sometimes Absolutely. if you don't trust yourself trust the judgment of other people yeah. who yeah. want to help you on the way um because it, it's really hard step isn't it being vulnerable with your writing showing your writing to other people I think if you've been in a critique group like we all have at various points it's it's quite a scary process sharing your writing but yeah it's it's brilliant because then other people will bring you on by picking out things that you hadn't seen before um, and, and developing your writing. Um, so yeah, there's that scary moment where you've got to share your writing with someone else. Yeah. But I think the benefits far outweigh any negatives about about the fear. So yeah, Lucy, that's something you'd say that you really need to you know overcome any barriers you have about self being self conscious and fearful and just just move forward. And the, those baby steps, like I say, like if the first time you write, it's just to yourself in a notebook and it goes in a drawer, then each time you will be writing a little bit more and then you might build up to mm -hmm. entering a competition or reading it to somebody in your family or a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's all that we're ever doing. It's just the audience gets a little bit bigger and the, the stage that our work goes out to gets a little bit more daunting, but very exciting. Mm -hmm. There's the other side of that thrill uh, whenever there's fear once you actually mm -hmm. do it the relief and that confidence and that surge of I can't believe I've just done that um mm -hmm. you can get addicted to that feeling as well and I think that the little baby steps the achievements each each way and they will always come through on the other side to believe in yourself okay so yeah we've talked about advice you'd give in general but I'm just wondering if you could think about who you were as a young person and what you would say to that young person now um I might even answer my own question in a minute after you two have had the go so I'll have to think about that one but yeah younger Hallie Hallie older Hallie to younger Hallie what would you say to younger Hallie don't give up definitely don't give up because there was so many times where I felt like giving up and and it was awful like I just didn't believe in myself and and now I look back and I think you know what you was down the path you was meant to go down the portico was meant to happen. Um, going to college, um, doing the access course was meant to happen. Going to university was meant to happen. Everything's just going the way it should be going. And it's amazing. So trust yourself and trust in the process. Trust, yeah. And trust your struggles as well. Okay. That's really a um, powerful thing to say. So yeah. trust your struggles. Yeah. Right. I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, Lucy, what advice would you give to little Lucy? Um, little Lucy, I would say you're not going to be a marine biologist <laughs> or a nutritionist or a psychiatric nurse or anything else that at one point mm -hmm. I wrote down as an aspiration to be because writing seemed very unachievable. Mm -hmm. um, I was the youngest of four. They all went into the sciences and I was kind of being led that way. Um, and I would say to myself, a bit like what Hallie's just said, stick to actually what's true in your heart, not what you mm -hmm. feel you should be writing down as a, a good career. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed at what you achieve um in life and what you what you actually create from something that you love mm, yeah yeah I think I'd say to my younger self that yeah don't think that fear of failure don't let fear of failure stop you even attempting to try that it's better to have a go and for it not to work out that failure is absolutely okay 
because you can't unless you sort of branch out and challenge yourself and make mistakes and have rejection then you can't get the yeses that you need to kind of go through the process and get some no's before you get the yeses and then you get more and more yeses and then you know next thing you know you're published and you've got some kind of career but you've really got to go beyond your comfort zone I think in order to to achieve something Right. OK, I think one last question and then we'll bring it to um, a conclusion. I just would like to think about either what you're reading or writing at the moment. So, Hallie, could you tell us anything about your reading or anything that you're working on, anything you're writing on at the moment? Yes, I am writing an article on the AIDS epidemic, um, which is what I did my dissertation on. Um, and it's just it's voluntary that I do writing for a magazine so I'm just doing that at the minute I'm rereading the normal heart right so non-fiction has been another strand to your bow so you've written the, yeah. the, the the short stories you've written the poetry and you're focusing on the non-fiction as well yeah. okay Lucy now um um the people watching this probably will not notice from this that you are quite well on in a pregnancy so obviously you <laughs> Quite, you've got quite other things on your mind at the moment but um are you writing anything are you reading anything at the moment i am reading a huge anthology on irish mythology which was recently gifted by a family member to make sure that in these last stages of pregnancy i am still and calm and not doing very much um not doing extreme nesting so i'm sat with this huge book on my lap and it is beautiful and it's really well written um i'm not actively writing anything in particular but as always I'm mm -hmm. always scribbling ideas and whenever I'm stuck in a book of mythology mm -hmm. I'm always making notes because I have an ongoing um, novel at the minute um, that is Greek mythology based so I don't know why I'm reading Irish mythology other than interest but at the same time um, the, I find inspiration from anything so there's always a notebook on the go there's always a book on the go. Yeah, I think that's probably uh, a good place to finish. That notebooks are so important. So jotting down I love ideas. Because <laughs> you never know, like a little jot of an idea that you just write down one day, then a year later might turn into something else. And then reading, we need to practice our craft, don't we, by seeing what is being written and because we love books. Um, so, yeah, should we finish on that note? So keep reading, yes, keep definitely. jotting, um, and keep pushing ourselves to and to make things happen. Well, brilliant. I've really enjoyed that. Thank you so much, Hallie. Thank you so much, Lucinda. Um, thank you to the Portico for this opportunity. Um, and I hope you enjoyed listening. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>